Hi, everyone, and welcome to this week's episode of Like, Share, Follow, episode 48. Can you believe it? And this week, I have Ellie Meyer, who is the operations administrator for USC Thunder Netball, but that is not all, is it, Ellie? Just tell me. Yeah. You also, you work for Seven News. Please, please explain. Yeah, so I've been at Seven for three and a half years now. So last night was an exciting opportunity. I directed my first live bulletin, which was awesome. Um, but I'm pretty confident in every other role that can go behind the scenes in news. So direct assistant, audio director, floor managing, edit, camera. So yeah, work my way around there. Wow, you can do everything. <laughs> yeah, work my way around in three and a half years. Yeah, that's amazing. And so, and you were saying you recently, only a few weeks ago, graduated from USC. And yeah. um, congratulations. And um, what degree did you do? So I graduated in a Bachelor of Business majoring in Tourism, Leisure and Event Management and then minored in Social Media. Excellent. And we we're also discussing, so because you did the social media minor, you're explaining that you actually have used, thank, thank, that's good, <laughs> not that you gained in that, the course to help you in your current roles. Is yeah, that right? Yeah, so, yeah, so at USC Thunder Netball, I do their social media and at USC Netball Academy as program coordinator, I do their Facebook. So it's pretty good that I learned that at uni to be able to put that all into process and into plan. Excellent. And so... Looking at the roles that you have, so you also have another role. So you have, so tell me about the other role as well. Yeah. So I just briefly mentioned that I was program coordinator at USC Netball Academy. So that's also organising 60 up and coming athletes who are coming into the program and wanting to be talent identified for higher programs in netball. So that's leading into the Sapphire series that I am ops, man, ops administrator for at USC Thunder Netball. So that's the next step. And then hopefully one day becoming a Sunshine Coast Lightning player. Wow. So um, when do you sleep? <laughs> <laughs> it sounds like you, you I thought I was busy, but no, geez, you, you're juggling three things and you were also juggling study. So yeah. I have some questions around that. So you had multiple things going on. How did you, Because and I remember you always met your assessment deadlines as well. So yeah. how did you do that? Um, because you had so many things <laughs> Yeah, so whilst I uni, I pretty much had two jobs the whole way through three years. Um, calendar was my best friend and a to-do list was also my best friend. I had to make time of the use use of the time I had to benefit that and then also get some sleep at some times as well. So basically working in the mornings, then going to work, coming home, doing uni and then going to bed pretty much. So getting it done when I can and then always having a list to be able to tick it off and make sure I'm getting on top of things and on track of all things as well. Yeah, I mean, lists are my best friend as well. So, <laughs> so with yeah. the roles that you you have, uh, what do you think set you apart from other grads? And, and at that stage, you were a student, so other um, candidates going for those roles? Yeah. So my first step into netball events management, um, my passion, I played netball for 16 years, played it, coached it, umpired it. So that's always been a big passion of mine and more specifically where I wanted to have a job. Um, so I went to volunteer for Sunshine Coast Lightning Game Days in 2019 and they ended up offering me Australian Netball League's operations coordinator. So I was pretty stoked with that. So I took that and the main difference they told me was me having a background in netball, being able to understand the game and understand all the processes that are already in place in the netball world um, because coming in pretty blind into a netball world, you don't really know what's going on. Um, so that was the main difference when I was offered that position and then I've continued to go into positions similar to that role. So that I think having that netball background and being more specific in the netball industry is probably what set me apart from other graduates. Absolutely. And what about Seven? How did how did that all come about? <laughs> um, so that was pretty, purely through my uncle. He was an engineer there, had been for a while. So a lot of places, um, it's who you know. So luckily in that type of industry, it is being in behind the scenes as well of the news production it's who you know, um, sadly not what you know, um, but that was pretty lucky and I've been there for three and a half years, so I'm pretty happy with that. Yeah, but, I mean, it may be who you know when you get in there, but uh, <laughs> you don't know what you're doing, they probably won't no. <laughs> <laughs> and you probably so, won't know them for very long either. So Yeah, 
and I did not have a passion for television or me like that side of things prior to going to seven so my passion for behind the scenes and news production has increased massively since I've started and I absolutely love it now yeah I mean it's such a fast-paced sort of dynamic thing and and you can't predict really what's what's going to happen so um yeah yeah, that's that's amazing and tell me what has been some of the best career advice you've been given um know your worth like volunteering can get you places but then you also have to know your worth so you can't give away yourself too much for free um you kind of have to understand where your limits are and not give yourself that much space um and use your contacts to the advantage absolutely great advice and do you have any advice for people who want to make that transition from volunteer to you know that that's quite a yeah it's conversation quite, that you can have. I'm sorry to put you on the spot like that, but do, have yeah, you no. had experienced I've, yeah. that? I've definitely had to experience that. That's what's ended up with me having some of the best roles I've gotten. Um, so I volunteered 15 hours a week for six months, and that yeah. was kind of like yeah. Towards after about three or four months, I was like, yeah, okay, this is starting to get a little bit crazy. Um, so that's when I kind of was like, I had to have that tough conversation to say, all right, I've given you this much it's time for you guys to give me something as well rather yeah. than just a few, few few shirts or like something simple like that it's time for a little bit more so yeah it's well, just a bit on you that takes a lot of yeah. courage to do yeah. that but yeah just being um, confident, yeah being absolutely. confident being able to have that conversation and did you did you practice that conversation before <laughs> you went and had it Yes, I did. I did practice it multiple times and was like asking friends, asking family. I was like, all right, well, what do I say? What do I do? Like how do I approach this? What's the best way to do this? So, yeah. But, yeah, best advice I took and it got me to places where I want to be. That's fantastic. I, I was um, listening into this Clubhouse chat a few weeks ago and it was on this a similar topic about, you know, talking about prices and, and um and things like that and they, they they said it's just you have to put it say it with the tone of like you're asking someone to pass the salt so yeah. you, just ask, you know it's just matter of fact like okay I've done this work for you now now you know now it's time for me to get something back like I want to stay yeah. you know that's great yeah. um yeah that's excellent advice and so let's reflect now on university so what has been some of the um the best things that you learned at university or the most useful things that you use in your work now? Um, Mainly for my thing is knowing your audience. So like, especially in marketing and events, so like selling your audience um, and being able to target them specifically for when you're selling tickets for an event. So with home games, you've got to be able to target your audience, which our our young netball is coming through and wanting to watch um, some of the coast girls that have made their way through pathways. So, like, just knowing the audience and who you want to target through throughout the whole thing, I think that was the most key thing I learned throughout university to be able to benefit the most out of your job. Yeah. it's. I mean, so important. that That's the fundamental um, skill, yeah. fundamental part of communication, isn't it, is knowing who your audience yeah. is. Yeah. Um, and what's something that you wish you'd learned at the university that you've needed out working um, and you've had to upskill because you didn't learn it? Um, I'm not sure if there is, I'm not sure if there is something that I, I know there is things that I didn't learn, but I don't really know specifically. But one thing I wish I had in university was a prac or an internship that, and it was a requirement of my course. Mm. Um, unfortunately it wasn't a requirement, so I didn't have to do it. So I was like, oh, okay. And I was just lucky that I was offered those opportunities when I was in my second year, um, to be able to do those jobs. But I wish it was a practical or an internship that was a requirement of part of my course. Just be able to yeah. get that work, real world, real world experience because events. Absolutely. Is so yeah. it's just you have to gain that insight into events and insight into anywhere really, just to be able to understand what you're really studying. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's so it's so important getting getting that, and I I think you'd, sometimes you even need more than one internship as well to um 100%. to get that yeah. experience all the way through. Because I think it helps it helps you feel more confident and ready for what to expect and you're not so green when you go out. You can sort of hit the ground running a bit more. Yeah, and you're not so thrown in the deep end when you're expected to know all this stuff and you're just like, all right, here you go, here's your information and you're just, you're like, oh, you're just drowning. What do I do? So you're, like, <laughs> <laughs> you're 
was like, okay, I'm just gonna like find my feet real quick. So, yeah. yeah. Um, so yeah, so internships, and you know what? I've, as I said, you're you're the forty eighth person I've interviewed, and internships come up so often in these interviews that students wish yeah. they did them. Their advice to current students is to do more of them. So it's um yeah, it's a constant theme that keeps coming yeah. up. So. Social media, you're still heavily involved in it and it changes yeah. time. So what is something that you've learned in the last couple of weeks? It could be a platform change or it could be a tool or something related to social media that you'd like to share with us. Um, it's not something that's new or anything, but LinkedIn bio, LinkedIn bio is probably my best friend at the moment. With selling tickets for a home game, selling tickets for an event, anytime pushing an event like recently, we I've had to do it a lot. Um, so it's that's this main thing of being able to like that's your main platform where you're talking to your audience. It's an an ease of them to be able to just click that link in the bio to go straight to wherever they need, rather than yeah. them having to find a million ways to go through and find that link. And yeah, that's been my best friend lately. And so is that and that's predominantly on Instagram? Yeah, mostly on Instagram because yeah, Facebook you can just have it in the comments. Well, so. yeah, yeah. So how many? your um on your biggest profile how many followers do you have um so i off the top of my head i think it's about four thousand five thousand around that but then yeah that's on our instagram so yeah and it sounds like they're heavily engaged like that's you've actually built yeah yeah because it's majority of our younger netballers who are wanting to come up and coming like and follow those footsteps of the athletes that are there so it's they're wanting to know what's going on in the netball world in the semi-professional athlete sport yeah and so tell me now what um, advice would you give to emerging professionals or uh, current students around who are emerging professionals um, around how they can succeed in their careers apart from being highly organized and the benefits of that doing internships uh, is there anything else and knowing you knowing their worth yeah you could um, um, just yeah, just trust your gut with what you think will work. You can always change the process and how you can end up in the end pro- in, in the end game and it's just the way you succeed. Yeah, I reckon that's good, mate. Just trust what you know. Yeah, and that's, that's great advice. And now the most important question of the whole show is who do you like, share and follow? Um, so netball, net, netball obviously. Of course. <laughs> <But> then, <laughs> I also have a big passion for adventuring and camping, so like the like following stuff like Escape to Ringers West and, and a few other camping pages. So yeah, excellent. And so, I mean, if, if you can, you could um, tag them in the the bottom of the yeah. Um, see if you get time. That would yeah. be great. So we've sort of reached the end now of of our um, interview. So tell me, do you have any final words to share with people watching? or with those emerging students, I mean emerging professionals, who are going to watch this later? Um, just trust your gut, be on time, know, know, what's, know what's happening next and you'll be right. Grow, that should be a bumper sticker. <laughs> trust your gut, be on time and know what's happening next. Yeah. That's exactly. advice for life. So thank you, Ellie. That's a, they're amazing yeah. words of wisdom. Um, so thanks so much. And next week we have for episode 49, um, Samantha Bennett, who's a marketing automation specialist at TAFE Queensland. So thank you so much. And thanks to everyone who watched and, um, we'll see you next week. Thanks.